I'm Keith Wright. I'm currently the executive director at the Millennium Water Alliance uh, here in Nairobi. I've been married 28 years. I have four children. I have been a CEO three times, including this one. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work in East Africa in and out for about 30 years. Hard to believe it's been 30 years. And I'm a follower of Jesus. For me, success is more and more, yes, about relationships, that includes my family, but investing into other people and seeing them over time. Uh, and we were talking about some of my friends at Cornerstone. So to see them 30 years later in, in leadership roles, to me, that's success. Because, you know, the roles that we play, even being a CEO, um, your impact is really about those right around you. So at one time I had almost 3,000 staff in 26 countries, which is pretty chaotic. But I realized that to achieve that, I needed to invest into the eight people right around me, you know, the C-suite, the senior leadership. And their success is how you change the world because they then support their 10, they support their 10. So kind of like with discipleship, to me, success is how are we empowering others to be excellent, to really not just be nice, but to do things that matter. Um, and yeah, keeping my family together or them letting me stick around is a big part of success as well after 28 years. But yeah, it's about relationships and about investing in others and giving them skills, giving them ideas uh, and letting them coach you as well over time. Yeah, I mean, the right answer is my faith. I know that, and it's true. Uh, you know, my faith in, in following Jesus is very much about how are you using what you know, what you've done, and your relationships to do what's in front of you. Um, so yes, my faith is a big part of that, but even deeper, and I think it's from my faith, is doing what I'm made to do. I have to do that. So. Sometimes I wish I wouldn't bring up solutions. I'd rather just stay at a certain level. But one of the, the CEO roles I had, I just, I have a hard time when I can't fix the next level up. I get frustrated. That's not always a good thing, um, but I always like to fix things. Like this can be better. We can do this better. We can do this differently. And that's my wiring. You know, there's an Old Testament story. Uh, they call them David's mighty men, right? Uh, and there was one of these, it's a very, two or three lines, very small. And it says, Benaiah, on a snowy day, jumped into a pit with a lion and killed him. It's pretty random, right? Uh, but that's been my kind of calling in my career, has been jumping into snowy pits with lions on snowy days, which is going into situations that are challenging and, and helping fix them. Um, not that I have all those abilities, but that's what I feel called to do. So what motivates me is expressing what I'm made to do. So like this organization, you know, needed some change. And I was asked, hey, you've done this before. Can you help us be better? Can you help us be what we want to be? So that's what motivates me. And I think just being who we're meant to be is what makes you feel solid and strong and capable. Um, and I can share stories about failures where I found myself in positions where that was not the case. And it gets very difficult over time. About failure. Thankfully, I've never failed. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, failure is one of those things where it's what brings us closer to God. It's how we learn. And it's awful pretty much every time, at least for me. I'm a kind of a competitive person. I don't like to fail. Um, but man, failure is so important. Um, probably my most notable failure uh, was a business I started. Uh, Africa focused consulting uh, and advising. And uh, I made some assumptions about the business, the revenue that didn't come true. I'll put it lightly. So it was really a struggle because I felt like, wow, I know this stuff. 
but I'm not getting the, the, the client flow, the revenue flow that I was expecting. So then you start thinking you take it personally or what's going on. But that failure showed me what I'm not good at, which is so important. I'm not a good salesperson, right? I just assumed I can sell, Who, you know, but I'm not, right? I don't love that. I'm not good at it. Um, I also learned some things about being an advisor and that I'm a better builder than I am advisor, if that makes sense. Um, so I realized I'm better in a messy, chaotic organization than trying to start my own business. But that was three and a half years of just struggle, you know, and but the things I learned from that and some of the relationships that came out of that are irreplaceable. So I'm glad I don't have. Well, I hope I don't do it again. <laughs> I'm glad I went through it now. At the time, it was, it was pretty, pretty rough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at my age, we, you know, you have some, the world's a hard place. The world's a hard place. Uh, you, you bump against rough edges and yeah, personally, professionally, everywhere. There, there are these challenges. Um, I would say recovering from crisis or, or trauma is for me very fundamentally remembering or being reminded that God is good and God cares about the details. And I say that it seems very simple, almost seems trite, but in the middle of trauma, in the middle of chaos, I didn't always believe those things. You know what I mean? You almost realize like, God, are you aware of what's happening? Don't you see? Like, aren't you? you know, so sometimes you wonder, does God even know about the details? Does he really care? You start feeling like there's nobody answering. So remembering that God is love and that God cares about the details are the most important things. But how to do that, I have found is having an honest community around you. People who aren't just there when it's when things are successful, but friends who can remind you and challenge you and say, hey, snap out of it, you know, time to go. So, you know, I, I, I ref, I'd like to think of it's important to build a house for all seasons when you have time so build relationships that are honest that are available and that can challenge you because um, otherwise when we get into crisis it's so hard to see clearly um, so yeah having friends who can see for you and say hey it's going to be okay or this is really serious you should be more concerned so yeah i think building relationships uh, is how you create kind of a personal resilience yeah Yeah, so I studied political science, and then we have a thing called the LSAT, the law board exams you take uh, to apply for law school. So I just thought you do political science, you go to law school. I wasn't inspired by that, but it seemed like what people do. And I was living in Washington, D.C. at the time, where people are all into this policy government stuff, which is great, by the way. Um, and so I applied to law school and had an opportunity to go work at Echetangala Ranch. Cornerstone Development, and this was 1992, long time ago. So I thought this will be a nice adventure, and uh, then I'll go to law school and do what people do. And uh, so got to work with Tim Kreuter. That's when I met William Chinunu, Babu, Ahmed, um, so many friends from that place. So I went for, it was meant to be six months, just do some good, kind of mission trip kind of thinking. And I, I wouldn't say I fell in love with whatever but i fell in love with the idea that this felt like me and i wasn't even sure what that meant but those relationships that context um i loved being out in the shags so I, I, that was fun you know 22 years old it's a big adventure um but i didn't know anything about this stuff i didn't know agriculture i didn't know anthropology i didn't know language so my undergraduate degree i mean it was it was you learn how to think. I mean, school, school, but technically I didn't have any experience to say, hey, hire me for this. Right. Um, so a couple of things I did end up going back to school for economics and uh, doing business because of that. But at the time. Yeah, I think what's most important, if you find a passion, that's not what you studied, that's OK. In fact, it's normal. And I would say, first of all, it's really important to be honest with that feeling. So I remember when I decided to stay in Uganda longer, and I'll come to why, uh, 
some of my friends in the US were like, that's crazy. What are you doing? Like law school was what's here, but you're wasting time over there. So being honest to say, I feel like this might be my passion. I need to explore it. That's risky because the clock's always ticking. Um, but uh, my friend Tim Kreuter at the time said, why don't you stick around for a year with no plane ticket in your hand and just see if you really like it, right? It's easy to get, oh, ooh, that looks like fun or that looks exciting, right? But he's like, stick around, let it get boring, let it get old, you know, see if you still love it, right? Um, so I, I would say one thing is have the courage to feel maybe there's a passion, but take the time to really test that. It's easy to get swept up in images about this, you know, blah, 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 whatever. It's easy to get misled on what feels like a passion might just be an extra cup of coffee you had and you feel excited about something. Um, but beyond that, you know, the farther you get away from your degree, five years almost, as you get closer to 10, people are not that concerned about where you went. They're, they're concerned that, that you went. Usually there's a degree qualification. You, you, you know, you got your bachelor's, whatever. But as you more, every year that goes by after school, I don't ask people that I hire about what did you study? I wanna know what they can do and what they've done the last five years, seven years. So if your passion is a different direction, don't worry about it. You know, that's okay. University is a great investment, no matter what your, your major area is. Um, but one is just trust that what you learn how to do is what you'll sell as, as you apply for jobs in the future. The other would be do the work, uh, do the work. You know, I, I, when I get to guest lecture and talk to young people in North America and Europe, they often say, I want to do what you do. I want to run a global NGO. My answer is I worked for free for four years. I lived in, at Echitangala Ranch much of that time, just learning, studying. I wasn't going to school at the time, but I was reading every book I could find on agriculture, every book I could learn on, you know, the things around me, around business, around savings, cooperatives, all this kind of stuff. So do the hard work, educate yourself. If you have an opportunity for grad school, that's awesome. I ended up doing that as well, and that really helped. Um, but ultimately, go for it. But do the hard work because you have to prove yourself. You have to do the work. You might have to intern. You might have to volunteer. Um, but as you prove that you're capable in that area, the opportunities will keep opening in that way. Uh, at this point, I think they figured it out. Um, yeah, I think my parents would say that he is serving the poor and he's hanging out with his friends in Kenya, um, in my relationships here. Uh, but it's kind of their fault I do what I do. So they were doing kind of international stuff. They connected me with Michael Timmis, which was, connected me to Cornerstone back in the day. So when they used to complain, where are you at the holidays? Like, this is your fault. <laughs> so don't, don't get mad at me for not turning up. But, but I do think it's important that our parents do understand what we do. Get outside. Seriously, uh, you know, I've, I've always loved the outdoors. Um, and the more, I mean, when I was a young professional, we didn't have these cell phones and all this computers and all that kind of stuff. We could think, I mean, not that we're smarter, but we had so much time. And believe me, living at Etchetown Gala Ranch in those days, you had time. <laughs> um, so I, to me, honestly, to this day, it's get outside. You know, unplug, whether that's hours of the day or is it days of the month, whatever works. Um, find time to think and to listen to God. I think our, in my kids are age 24 down to 16. Um, and I think one of the challenges their generation has, will have, is the ability to really focus, the ability to really think deeply. And that's how we hear God's voice, um, is when we can think deeply, not quick, quick, quick. Um, so for me, getting outside is part of that, whether it's going for a jog in Karura Forest or going fishing up on Kenya, whatever, but just outdoors. The other people will have other disciplines that can do that, but that is a fundamental thing that's become so important to me. And most of the, I would say the more challenging 
business and organizational solutions I've come up with are probably more likely to happen in a river or on a jog after I've done my homework, right? Like you got to study, you got to know your stuff, but then it's letting your mind explore. But I would just say it, it looks like how you feel when there's a cool breeze. I am most grateful for 28 years married to Heidi, which I can tell you guys, if you're on the younger scale watching this, you have to do the work. It's the same for all these things. Things do not come easy in this world. So do the work. Um, we have fun most of the time. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. For my, for my marriage of 28 years and my children, four, um, we're all on uh, pretty good terms. Also takes a lot of work. But those relationships, and I would also say my relationships in this part of the world, which are now, it's hard to believe time goes by, but you know, 30 years old, some of these. And, and to have just trusted relationships where, you know, the work we all do, you know, in the work of MWA, we're, you know, impacting 53 million people around the world, right, with clean water. And that's, that's exciting. But you change the world through the people around you. And I'm just so grateful for good friendships in Kenya, Uganda, where we're doing life together and we can support each other's marriages and, and business ideas, right? Once you're friends, you start brainstorming. You think, what's next? How do we get these other companies into Kenya? So, yeah, I'm grateful. You said most grateful, so I'd have to stick with relationships, but grateful for a lot. Yeah, and I'm thankful to say that. Do the work. Do it with others. Do the work and do it with others. And by others, I mean people who can really challenge you and encourage you, but be honest with you. You know, there's a level of friends that's, uh, when, they, when you do something well, they're like, nice job, and that's good. But there's a real friend that can say, that wasn't such a nice job, or that was weird. Like, what, what, <laughs> what's going on with that? So, but do the work. Things don't come easy. Um, and to do the work requires, this is where faith comes in. What is your passion? Um, you know, if, if you get a good sense of what your passion is, you can commit to the work. If you're not sure about your passion, it's hard to really dig in. Because is that really my thing? That Maybe not, maybe, because it gets hard and you have to do the work and do the time uh, to develop your credibility and, and direction in something. But um but once you commit to it, just go for it. I will say this, last word would be, movement is more important than perfection. That's become one of my kind of just mantras um, because sometimes we try to get things perfect. What university, what job, what town, what spouse. Um, and well, spouse needs to be perfect, so take that one off. But so many of our decisions, we try to sit still and figure them out when the only way to create most solutions is to take steps. So movement, taking steps in faith is more important than trying to make it perfect because you'll be sitting there a long time after wondering why isn't it perfect. And that goes with faith, right? You have to have faith to take a step. So whether it's a move, whether it's a, a relationship or a job, like just keep moving uh, and you'll make mistakes, but you're moving. And I think that's something fundamental about faith and how God honors steps even when it leads to a failed business yeah that's that's movement you learn stuff and you move on so that's my last word yeah